What's up, folks? Heck, I have not seen you guys for a while on this channel. I think the last video I put up on my page was from the Hunt Expo, but I just made it back from a two and a half week push uh, looking for elk sheds. Got home late last night and got to snuggle with the Jade pup and the woman. She's gonna help me film. But I wanna show you guys some of the stuff we found. So I started Shed Tour with a collaboration with Martin Shag. Are you so excited? Say hi. Hi, people. I was with my buddy Martin and Braden, AKA Big Time. So we went out and hit some country together and had a heck of a time, dude. I think three big pushes where we would pack camp in, find a stack of sheds, pack out, rest, regroup, restock, and do it again. I think we did that three times and then I did a solo trip on the very last day. And I found a couple, uh, nothing special, one nice brown. I'll show you what we got. So this little guy, the GFC, the Go Fast Camper. It's actually pretty handy when you're doing a long trip like that because you need somewhere to protect your gear, lock your gear, and lock your antlers. And these, um, excuse me, Jade, watch out, puppy. This uh, shell, which also, by the way, is a bed, slept in that a few nights. It was very helpful on my elk hunt. Watch out, Jade. Um, it just gives you, gives you a lot of protection from the rain, the weather, and then somewhere to lock all your antlers, which if you look closely in here, we got a stack. Let me show you guys. So that's the shed pile so far for 2024. We're going to take them out. I'll show you guys what we found. So here's kind of how I stacked the, the whole deal. Got this little uh, strap holding up anything that had to do with gasoline so it could stay upright on the bumpy roads and whatnot. So we got plenty of gas, never even had to use these. Take those off. Next bunch was some gear, some emergency essentials, a jack, uh, tools and stuff are in here, a shovel, pantry full of food, and a chainsaw. I'm going to stack the sheds in here where they belong in the big old shop and uh we're gonna see how big we can build this 2024 pile first up little deadhead coos deer wasn't even gonna bother to pack it out but heck they don't weigh anything so i threw it on the pack anyways just nice little solid white three by three what do you think jade not very interesting is it found a few coos sheds that were worth throwing on the pack again because they're small they don't weigh anything so i'm getting myself a nice little collection of those don't mind the outfit i had some overall type of pants while i was pressure washing the truck getting to the good stuff <laughs> so these guys have been nice so these are peak refuel mill buckets they just they come fully stocked, and then I just keep using the buckets over and over as I refill them with uh, new food. But I've been eating a bunch of those while we're out on these. This is tools. There's a little over here. But it was on sale at Harbor Freight on our way out. So to change the tracks on the quads, which are right there, Got ourselves a nice little lift. Wasn't sure if we we're gonna need that for an emergency purpose or not. That's kind of how I kept them locked in there and hidden. And let's pull them out and show you what we got. All right, first up, I went on a solo hike. It was a single overnighter. Or was it two nights? It was two nights. Yeah, one full day. And maybe a half day but it was lucky enough to score just a nice solid round six point so that's a perfect one for dog chews something like that was literally i mostly wouldn't keep something like that but now that i sell them for dog chews that's like perfect to just give jade or friends and family got those two she wants it <laughs> to chew it up all right this should be fun um 
again, this is the kind of stuff that where I go, I don't necessarily care to pack out to keep, but cut that in half and split it and I can make a bunch of dog chews for my dog or friends and family. Because they're still fine, there's still like a very protective outer shell of that and the bone marrow besides this where they're already chewed on. From about here forward, that bone marrow will be just fine. So we got stuff like that, stuff like this, hard white. This is a year old antler, but down there, the rodents just get at them, chew them up. It's kind of discouraging because you know you're, you know that even one year old antlers are going to be destroyed by the rodents, but sometimes that's just how it goes. Yeah, let me get this one out for you guys. It's a cool one. I glassed this up like a mile away, couldn't quite tell what it was. I knew it was risky going all the way out there to get it. But when I made it, it out there was well worth the hike. Just a big old palmated bull. The thing has got unders that would score. Like if he was complete, that'd be like a 370 bull. Super massive. Still have some dark color, but the good thing about it was it just hadn't been chewed up. So that that's going in the keeper pile for just uniqueness. I really like that one. Right, this next one is a lot like this and people who have seen it have already asked me if I think it's the same bull. I do not. I think it's a different bull, but the genetic in there is doing the same thing. Weird. This is one of my best finds of the trip. Again, a bull that has the front end to be like a big trophy bull, the mass to be a big bull, big old dished out burr, probably an old bull. But look, we call him the balloon bull. Look at that. The crazy thing is how solid it is. And even though it's missing almost half an antler, it is so heavy and dense, and a lot of that weight is inside this thing. But a lot of texture, a lot of points, and the fact that it was brown definitely made it a keeper. So this one and that one, those are keepers for my collection pile. No dog chews on those two. That's that one. I glassed this little guy from a ways away, and uh, you could tell it was not big. And then when I got over there, the other side was laying there around the corner that I couldn't see. So probably two year old sitting in the sun in the desert. Just a nice little five by six set. Could be a fun decoration size or obviously dog shoes. That's not keeper status. This guy was cool because I found it on a hillside that I had walked by the last two years. It just looked like a hill that would have way too much snow for the bulls to be on, but there wasn't any snow on it this year and it was all tracked out. So I went to check it out and found this guy and it's going to be hard to tell, but he's probably four years old, three or four years old, depending super cracked on this side but it still carries all its color on the backside. And the thing is super dense. Like that's another heavy antler that could probably be split into dog shoes for friends and stuff. Next one is a super, super cool set. I was so happy to find this next set. Cause I was having a heck of a day without any luck. And I was walking in these pine trees desperate to find some tracks started finding some elk sign and looked up on this rocky slope and these were laying there side by side so the cool thing is if you look at them on this side they look brown that side they're hard white but it is a hard white set just a really cool almost a slick five with that big whale tail obviously he had a six point but it chipped off this side's kind of got a, what I call like a shark tooth look to it seven point so these 
could be something that I keep around for a little while. They're definitely not going to be next up on the, the chopping block for dog shoes, but just a pretty, pretty set. Would have been cool to find them brown, but didn't have any luck on that. A lot of this stuff is just generic sheds. Nothing worth showing, showing off to all you guys. Well, maybe this one is. This is a nice little set. I don't know where his other side is. It's kind of buried. A lot of common stuff like that. Six points, hard whites, two-year-olds. This one got chewed to heck. So that, that's a bummer. There's one more set I really want to show you guys in here. I'll keep showing you guys the browns. We did get into a couple brown pockets. It's another like horrible genetic bull coming off a trophy unit. This is the type of bull that's just gonna die of old age because most people would never shoot a bull like that on a tag they've waited half of their life to draw. But he does not have the genetics to do anything. Just kind of a short palmated sucker. There's one pretty, pretty set in here. Actually, there's two. Let me dig them out and I'll show you guys. A lot of this kind of stuff, again, probably fun for you guys to even look at the small ones. Nice, solid, dense brown. We got this guy. Uh, yeah, hard white, one-year-old, six-point. Can't really tell, but this thing weighs a lot. This is the perfect antler, in my opinion, for dog shoes. So I can take off like a seven inch piece of that and that's what I call a jumbo off the main beam. So super heavy, dense, good quality antler, no match to that one. But there is a match to this guy. I want to show you. So let me get out this one. And oh, there's a match to that one too. I'll show you that one too. I got three three brown sets to show you. This one being the best. So let me dig them out and I'll hold them up. The things I wanted to show you are the brown sets. This one was laying side by side. I just got some boot tracks and horse tracks. Getting discouraged obviously because of that. And then went down the ridge like 50 yards and these were laying right next to each other. One of them tines down like that. The other one I think was tines up, but pretty cool sight. Another bull with some crappy genetics with this whole thing going on. I don't know what's going on with that genetic down there. Big old heavy bases. Um, just a cool brown set, so stoked to find those. So this, um, which one was it? The right one right here, this is the first shed antler I found of 2024 that was brown. I glassed it up and then I put my all in on it to check it out through the scope. I'll overlay a little bit of footage so you guys can check it out. So when I got over there, um, I just got to the antler and looked down through the brush and could see the left side. The left side's a little bigger and it was also standing like this. So on that one trip, I found three antlers that were standing tines down stuck in the mud so just a cool brown set fun antlers to find and last but not least the keepers this was by far the best antler of the trip and he is super dense as well they must have had good moisture down there this year because the antlers weigh a lot and uh, not a lot of the points are busted up he did break his fifth uh, this is just a quality quality bull and martin found his set from the year before across the canyon so clearly this bull is wintering right in there he has himself a little spot he really likes um, but yeah super dense fresh brown sheds these are all going to be featured on the shed tour videos over on the hush page i'm sure you guys are familiar with it by now but if not the link is in the description box well, we got it unloaded. Let me just show you guys this rooftop tent real quick. Whoa. These little latches might take two hands. Snap pop. 
Same over here. I'm lift that sucker up. Whew. I even got myself a memory foam topper in this bad boy. So you can sleep two up there comfortably. It pops up super quick, super fast, and that is the GFC. I'll tell you what, that thing, without that thing, I would not have killed my late season Arizona bull because Logan and I ditched our base camp and slept back here without heat or anything and just slept back there for two nights and we got, got the hunt done and tagged out on that slammer bull thanks to that thing. All right, we're gonna let that air dry out a little. It's because I did think it got a little wet on that last trip. Put this stuff in here and call it a video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just a quick look at my new pile for 2024. Last thing I want to mention is Brush for Bucks. The tickets are on sale on the website. If you're not familiar with Brush for Bucks, it's a conservation event that we put on uh, with First Light and other partners. We sell tickets on our website and that gets you a bag, um, swag and some other goodies, an Onyx membership, etc. We take all the proceeds to purchase seedlings of sagebrush and bitterbrush. And what we're going to go do is get a bunch of people, as many people as we can sell tickets to. I think we're shooting for 100 to 120 and we're gonna go plant uh, the bitter brush and the sagebrush in an area that has been burnt and it's basically just useless winter range, but it is critical migration and winter range for deer and elk. So it's important that we get out there, plant these seedlings, and hopefully, I can't remember what percentage they hope that will take off and germinate, but we're looking for more people to get involved. So I'm gonna put a link in the description box to the Get Hushin website. You can purchase your tickets there they're 100 bucks a person, but again, that comes with lunch and a swag bag. So check that out. But for now, guys, Shed Tour videos are going to be edited. Um, myself, Matty Ice, Logan, we're going to get in the lab, start putting Shed Tour videos together, and they're going to launch on the Get Hushin YouTube channel. But until next time, guys, I'll try to put up vlogs as much as I can while I'm home. But uh, trust me, I haven't been home much. So see you on the next one.